According to the national nonprofit Trust for Public Land, 91% of Portlanders live within a 10-minute walk of a park. I myself live walking distance to four of them. And these aren't just glorified grass patches with a couple of benches. Portland has some of the most beautiful parks in the country. But which are the best for a picnic with friends or an afternoon out with your dog? So today on CityCast Portland, we're talking about some of our favorite Portland parks with CityCast's director of digital strategy, Brian Vance, our very own producer, Julia Fiaioni, and you, our listeners. It's Wednesday, July 31st. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. Hey, Brian. Hey, Julia. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Hey, Claudia. Good to be back. Hey, good morning. (laughs) Well, I was trying to corral some like super fun facts about Portland City parks, but like not one reference would agree with like how many parks we have. (laughs) Yeah, it's like a weirdly debated (laughs) fact. (laughs) We're like, it shouldn't be. They're they're physical places. We should be able to count these. We should know. (laughs) So Wikipedia says we have at least 279. (laughs) But here's the deal, guys. I can counted the parks no you didn't i did what using google maps or something mm-hmm. yeah. i know using the list that city that <laughs> city of portland provides and i'm sorry i only counted and this also includes like parks that are managed by metro the state the feds right, um, right. 221 <laughs> okay but did you see there's another count out there okay by trust for public land this yeah. national nonprofit that does a lot of advocacy and work about building parks 330 how so, where are they getting these numbers <laughs> I will say they have a very robust research department that actually like works with local governments and oh, you're local saying that they're better I think their data is better than the, yeah. the city and Metro our government should know how many parks it manages that's all it's I a, say. it's a point of pride like that's a number that you should be able to show off yeah. Anyhow, so uh, listener, we have somewhere between 221 and over 300 parks. Uh, Somewhere in there. (laughs) Yeah. But um, the one thing that I hear the most about Portland when I have visitors over or I remember just coming, you know, like visiting myself was just the sheer amount of parks. Mm -hmm. Like I've Mm -hmm. just never seen so many parks in a city. And I think it's one of our calling cards and it's why this place is so beautiful. So I'm really glad that we we get to get nerdy about parks. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So you'll hear us go through not only like, you know, just a, a few of our favorite parks and why and all that. We also have some tape from our listeners because last time we were at Sunday Parkways, Julia asked a few people who came up to say hello, like, you know, where they live and what their favorite park was and why. So it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like we're like actually having a a chat cast with all of our listeners. Mm. With all of Portland, basically. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, we've all lived in different cities. Like, what do you think makes Portland Park so special? I think it's something you said. Like, I grew up in a city that's bigger than Portland, that doesn't have nearly as many parks as Portland. And so, like, it's the access to parks. We just, we seem to have a lot more of them, even if they're small. Like, you know, I live across the street from a park that isn't that big, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have to get in my car to drive to a park. Like, there are numerous parks that I can walk to within 10, 15 minutes. That's just not something that every city has, sadly. Um, Even in, like, the heart of the city, it can be hard to get to a green space. I also think, like, our parks are full of these big, beautiful old trees. um, And they're just really fun to look at. We don't necessarily have the most, like, beautifully manicured parks. Like, you know, we have some. um, But a lot of our parks, it's just, like, green space and trees. And that's fine. It's Mm -hmm. cool. They're there. Like, that's what I think sets us apart is we have them. So... Yeah, they feel very integrated into the surrounding environment. They don't seem like copy and paste like other big cities. Um, But I also feel like, Brian, that I've noticed over the years that people go to parks to express themselves. There are a lot of people that show up and they're hula hoop dancing or juggling and meeting new friends or joining some sort of sports group. And there's like constantly random events going on. At parks across the city, like, it just seems like you can kind of stumble upon them at any point in the summer. I remember one time I went to Laurelhurst Park for a tree climbing event with a bunch of arborists. And they were just, like, arborists up in trees competing to get up and down the fastest. And it just felt like one of the most Portland things ever. Yeah, you know, 
just to uh, add to something that you said, Brian, the sheer number of parks is, you know, what grabs me, but also the fact that it really is just like anywhere you go, you see a park. <laughs> right. But, and and there's also, I mean, let me just, let me say it this way. All the things that you said that you guys said, there's a reason for it is because like our park system was actually thought about when the mm-hmm. city was getting uh, built out. They they actually hired an architectural firm Interesting. to consider where parks will go. It was the Olmstead Brothers. It was and it was it's literally called the 1903 Olmstead Portland Park Plan. So it's one of the reasons why it's so integrated like into the makeup of our city. Yeah. Oh, that's not anything. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think other cities, you know what I mean? Like they might be like, oh, they have yeah, a plan. Should, yeah, there was it a didn't plan. Just, it did even though it can feel like it just popped up organically, there was an actual thoughtful plan here. I will say though, I went I went back to Toronto uh, to visit recently with my partner and they grew up in Portland. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, I kind of wanted to avoid going to parks as like a tourist destination in Toronto because I knew that they would not be impressive because of that reason, <laughs> yeah, right? It's an just, afterthought. It's like, yeah. oh shit, we should probably have some green space for people. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Will, what was the first park you guys visited in Portland that like really stuck with you? Oh, for me, this is such a like kind of cop out answer, but it's true. It's Forest Park. Like, you mm-hmm. know, when I moved here, I remember being really impressed with just the scale of it, the size of it, the views from it. You know, I can't remember that hike you can do, but you basically hike down a hill in Forest Park and you pop out at a bench that just overlooks the St. John's Bridge and all of St. John's. Gosh. And if the weather's right, you can actually see Mount St. Helens in the background. It's just such a cool space. There's really nothing else like it in the entire country. It is the biggest you know, urban forest in all of America. I mean, it's it's just fascinating. What about you, Julia? I always talk about this place, but for me, it was the Bluffs or Moxcrest Park, depending on... What is the actual name of that place? When you got to Portland. I think it's Moxcrest. <laughs> is like, it? It is. I've always heard it referred to the Bluffs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, like, I grew up, like it was in my 20s. I'm like, I grew up. <laughs> you grew up, yeah. <laughs> but I did. I was just a young adult. That's what we called it. We called it the Bluffs. Um, yeah. 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 I was uh, uh, I was shown that place on my my first birthday in Portland when I first moved here, and I remember just like sitting under the like iconic apple tree that's still there, apples all around me, and watching the sunset and just noticing all of these different uh, community connections that were being made around me, just people hanging out and drinking wine and talking and laughing, and it felt like something I'd never really experienced before. In Portland at that point, and also just generally, like it, there was something really uh, comforting about that environment, and it helped me understand like why people get so excited about like outdoor spaces here, and and why it's so important. Mm-hmm. It's just such a cool sunset view too. Like you're you're yeah. over that Union yeah. Pacific rail yard, and you can hear it. Oh, yeah, the, that's fun. The sounds, I love it. I actually, I get that if you live in that neighborhood, hearing the clanging at five in the morning isn't fun. But when you're there just like hanging out in the the park overlooking and you just hear this loud bang. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I love the contrast of it. And I also just love trains. So I feel like that's an extra special touch. It's just like, it's like, (laughs) oh, they're so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Julia, that was definitely my answer. So I'm going to give you an alt answer. (laughs) Yeah, Julia, you feel sorry. You stole it. That's so funny. But uh, the thing I was going to say was uh, Peninsula Park, but only because it was the first park that I did mushrooms at. <laughs> oh, that's really special. <laughs> that would have a wild impact yeah, on you. And it's not only like, I mean, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous park. But it, I didn't notice the symmetry until I was on mushrooms. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like when you're just yes. like, wow, yeah. those trees are the same height. And those trees are the same height. And I didn't realize. And then I went home and I Googled it. And I was like, oh, that's why. <laughs> like, it was planned. It's a European <laughs> style park. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I never noticed. This. I never noticed. I just was like, there's a lot of cool roses here. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that putting a whole new spin on it, you know? Yeah. It's so funny that you point that out, Claudia, because someone that we had met, a listener at uh, Sunday Parkways, had said the same thing and how... Um, that European style really comes through. They were doing mushrooms at Peninsula Park? (laughs) Yes. They may have been. Everyone does. (laughs) Uh, Let's listen to this one. My name is Blake, and I live in Irvington. My favorite park in Portland is Peninsula Park. Peninsula Park feels like you have gotten into a wormhole and came out the other end in Paris. 
That's true. Yeah. He nailed it. Yeah. Also, he may have been on mushrooms. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a quick break here. And when we come back, the best parks to take your mom or anyone visiting you. Well, what's one park you always take out of town guests or family to when they're visiting? Um, again, I'm going to be that person who picks the obvious one. I'm sorry, but I get to go first. So I'm going to do go it. Go on. <laughs> Mount Tabor. It's just like, yeah. it's cool because like most people don't realize that we have a dormant volcano in city limits. So that's always a fun fact to show literally everything at Mount Tabor. There's, you know, volleyball courts, tennis courts, hiking trails, dog parks, you know, beautiful views of the city, weird uh, water reservoirs that everyone's like, why aren't these swimming pools? And yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Good, good question. But uh, they're fun to look at. Yeah, and um, we're also not drinking water from them because they're gross. So. They're just there. They're just there. So uh, dumb. But, you know, like the fun history of like, yeah, that actually used to be our drinking water. And yeah, birds could poop in it. And yeah, teenagers could pee in it and all that stuff. It's just a it's a weird park. It's like it's very fun and just a, a great way to spend a few hours and the views up at the top are just really nice as well. So, yeah. yeah. What about you, Julia? I honestly, this is funny because I don't spend much time in Northwest anymore. I used to live over there, but every time someone visits, I always make the time to go up to Washington Park because it's like, it's just this whole experience. So mm. it's up in the Northwest Hills and it feels like it just like endlessly sprawls up towards the Japanese garden. And as you're moving up towards that direction, so you walk through Washington Park, there's a swing set and a playground and all these super tall trees and picnic tables, people hanging out. And you walk up, there's an amphitheater, there's a little trail, there's the rose test garden, and you can even go all the way past the tennis courts to the Japanese garden if you're mm, right. really ambitious. But it's all walkable and it gives you like a, such a good idea of the way that parks are, are laid out and embraced in our city. And I think it's really special for people coming for the first time to see. Washington Park feels like a uh, amusement park of parks. Like there's oh, a little yeah. bit of everything there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's wild. It, it really is one of the coolest parks, I dare say, in the entire country. Yeah. It is also one of the oldest parks in Oregon, the oldest park in Oregon. That oh. land was bought in 1871. So it's like that is one of the reasons why so much was built around mm -hmm. it because it has, like you were saying, the zoo, the World Forestry Center, the Hoyt Arboretum, the, you know, Rose Test Garden, the Portland Japanese Garden, plus all these little, little parks, you know, just the little. The Korean Memorial. The, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Did you know it's an active landslide? It's been an active landslide for decades. So there's work <laughs> going on at Washington Park right now. I didn't realize And it's like, what is that. happening? They're trying to like actually stabilize the ground that the entire park is on oh because it's God. been slowly sliding downhill for decades. Could you imagine just seeing lions downtown and they're like, they slid down. <laughs> <laughs> they just, they showed up. <laughs> they show uh, someone should have done something. I just feel like Portland at his worst. We're just a Simpsons episode. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, there's a reason. Just we are. There's a reason the creator, you know, he, he comes from Portland. Like he definitely got a lot of inspiration from here. So. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Well, I'm going to give you a very lazy answer because uh, when people visit me, they usually visit my neighborhood as well. And so, of course, I take them to Cathedral Park because oh, it's, yeah. you know, just a few blocks away. It's gorgeous. You know, the fact that it's so close to the river and you can actually access the river. Mm -hmm. You got the new dock. Yeah. yeah. And then it kind of slopes. There's the bridge. You know, there's like part two. You know, you go to one part. <laughs> but it's true. You go to one part. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is a cool park. And you're like, let's cross the street. There's more. <laughs> Hold on to your butt. <laughs> you know? And so it's just wonderful. And I love that uh, more and more organizations are using it as a place to like either play music or whatever, because I want something to be happening in that park like every day that it's not raining, because most of the time I just feel like it's me and my dog. <laughs> right. And you're like, what is, what is going on? Why aren't you taking advantage of this? I know, we have this awesome park, everyone. Anyhow. And it's so beautiful. Like the arches of the bridge supports, like it's just. Yeah. It's like artwork. Yeah. Well, right now they're reinforcing uh, the arches. So mm -hmm. it's kind of not that nice looking. There's just like white plastic, plastic all everywhere. over. <laughs> but the one thing that I like about it is that it's deterred pretty much uh, every person from taking uh, professional photos. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, because it's like ugly. And so they're not showing up with their... 
their whole kit and everyone in three outfits. And exactly. This is the thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna, you know I need a gripe. Here's the deal with that, you guys, <laughs> is that you don't get a permit. You're just you just bring an entire family yeah. from God knows where because they're not from St. John's. I'll tell you that much. And then you tell everyone who's just sitting there from St. John's to move. Right. <laughs> the we're entitlement. Just, we're like, but we live here. <laughs> Yeah. And I hate it because if you say no, you're a dick. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and if it's a quinceanera, like, I'm like, all right, you know, all right, I'll move. But, like, the thing is that it's too many things. It's, like, someone's birthday. There's a family shoot. Someone's, like, proposing. It's a <laughs> wedding shoot. There's just, like, too many fucking things. That's all. So it's like every <laughs> every person with an Instagram account got the memo that they need to show up and take I a photo know. there. So I'm hoping that once it comes back online you know, and yeah. it's unwrapped that people forget about it. Your gripe, yes, I don't want to shut it down. But as you were listing things um, about the possibilities of what could be happening at uh, <laughs> Cathedral Park, it reminds me of a, another clip that we have from a listener talking about how nostalgic this one park is for them, Lincoln Park, because of the memories that they had. I'm going to play it real quick so you guys can hear. Okay. So my name's Emanuel Citlal Popoca, and the neighborhood I'm from is Southeast Portland. Oh, I mean, my favorite park in Portland is probably the one where I grew up, uh, which would be out in the Southeast, would be Lincoln Park from there. The reason I like that park is uh, a lot of stuff has happened there. I guess my first kiss was there, a uh, girlfriend that I had at, at that time, basketball games, and just the list goes on and on and on and on. That just brings me a lot of nostalgia and a lot of joy in us, well, a lot of, a lot of growth in me in that area. How sweet is that? It's so sweet. It's very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I would move for someone's first kiss. <laughs> Confirmed not an asshole. We're about to have our first kiss, Claudia. Could you please They're like, hey. step out of the scene? <laughs> I'd be like, fine. <laughs> I'm going to stare at you, though. Okay, so <laughs> what is the best park for picnics, you think? I can jump in on this one. This one is... Uh, very specific to the fact that I live in this neighborhood, but Oregon Park in Kearns in the central east side is a really special park that I feel like is like oftentimes overlooked. It's very intimate. It's just like one almost like square space surrounded by uh, residential homes. So it feels like in the same way that like a neighborhood bar is a neighborhood bar, it feels like a neighborhood park. Um, and every day around 4 p.m., all the families come out of their homes and take their dogs for a walk or take their kids to the playground. Um, there's like constantly people having like mini volleyball tournaments with just like friends and neighbors. And coming up actually on August 15th, they're going to have a, a free uh, showing of Slumdog Millionaire and they'll have free popcorn and and people laying out on blankets. So it really is like a central point for this neighborhood. And every time I go, I just feel like I'm I'm connected to my environment. It's become like a, a safe space for me to get out of my own home. And uh, a listener that we met at Parkways used the same metric in de defining their favorite park. It was somewhere that was close to home. So I'll uh, play you that clip right now. My name is Graham Shipley, and I live in Woodlawn. I, I got to give a shout out to Woodlawn Park. It's my favorite because it's across the street from my house, but also it is just one of the strangest ones with all of its little nooks and crannies. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you guys know? Okay. I, I was like, what is up with Woodland Park? Um, mm -hmm. It's a basic earthquake emergency communication node. Okay. Oh, it's called Beacon. What? It's a place to go in Portland after a major earthquake to ask for emergency assistance if phone service is down or to report severe damage or injury. So just know no that way. if you're in the area, there's, you know, the big one hits and you don't know where to go to help, get to Woodlawn Park. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. I know. I I've never seen it. I've never been there, but I'm really intrigued by these nooks and crannies. Like, <laughs> little <laughs> places to hide away inside the park. Hide's maybe the wrong word. To tuck yourself away <laughs> hide in the away. park. <laughs> Brian, why are you on a hide in a park? Right? That sounds wrong. <laughs> I'm, I promise I'm not hiding in a park. I'm just saying, like, you can you can get out of, like, everyone's Instagram shots in the nooks and crannies. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I'm just going to say that that listener is really lucky because in case of an earthquake, he just has to cross the street. Mm -hmm. So easy. Right? I wonder if he knows that. <laughs> well, he does now, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about you, Brian? I lived in Selwood for a long time. And for me, it's Selwood Park, not Selwood Riverfront Park, the one just up the hill. Yes, there are two parks right next to one another. 
both named Selwood. One is Selwood Park and one is Selwood Riverfront Park. This is the one that has like the pickleball court. Yes, it has a pickleball court. It overlooks the Oaks Bottom uh, Wildlife Refuge. And it's just a really cool spot. There's tons of like picnic benches and shaded areas. And if you get the right spot, you can actually look over that mini lake in Oaks Bottom where you can sometimes see, you know, like herons and whatnot taking off. It's just yeah. a fun little place to just hang out. And like for that neighborhood, it's you can you can walk to it in like 15 minutes from literally any part of that neighborhood. It's just a nice central zone to just chill out. Yeah. Well, my pick, I mean, of course, has to be Mox Crest. That is the perfect spot for a picnic. Uh, I mean, I know we just talked about it, but or the bluffs, as as a lot of people know it, most people I would say, but I think it's like the perfect space. It's always been the my space to go for a picnic. It's close second is Peninsula, but I also mm. wanted to bring something up that I don't know if you guys have talked about, but there is a garden called Crystal Springs Rhododendron oh Garden. Oh my gosh! Uh-huh. Now that. Is a picnic. <laughs> Holy <laughs> cow, is that place beautiful? I totally forgot that that counts as a park. In That's Morris true. Team. It is a, it is technically yeah, a, a, it's park. a park. Yeah, so Crystal Springs Rhododendron Garden. If you guys haven't gone, it's like the reason I think it's because it's not a public free park. You have to pay five dollars. There's admission. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is like a way you can get in a little bit cheaper if you like uh Income dependent, like cheaper than five dollars, but I guess yeah, yeah, there's yeah, yeah there's like a sliding scale situation. Mm-hmm. So. Oh yeah, because you, you count all the kids. Jesus, you're yeah. right. No, that's true. Yeah, so if you're flush with money, Crystal Springs Rhododendron <laughs> Garden is an amazing, beautiful park, uh, especially in the summer. They allow dogs, they allow food, you know. And I go through whenever you walk through, you just see all these like little picnics out. It's just gorgeous, and especially if you go in like mid spring like when all the azaleas and the rhododendrons are blooming and you just see like more colors of rhododendrons than you even thought was possible and there's so many like ducks and geese there it's just like really fun to see like the wildlife interact and feel like you're in this little slice of nature but it's so beautiful yeah we had a listener at parkways also mention their favorite picnic spot so i'm going to play you that clip right now so we can hear it my name's jeff farr i live in the concordia neighborhood favorite park is Peninsula Park, especially right now, the peak rose season in the Rose City. Beautiful place for a picnic. And we were just there on Friday night. He was just picnicking there. That's awesome. (laughs) Good for him. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Peninsula Park used to be the site of like an old like horse racing track in the early 1900s. Oh, can I, can I one up you on that fun fact? Uh, Yes. (laughs) It was actually owned by a local businesswoman named Liverpool Liz. That is in the early 1900s because it was <laughs> That's fake. it wasn't just a racetrack, it was a roadhouse that she owned. So she oh. just had this nefarious wonderland for ne'er-do-wells and then the <laughs> city purchased it from her in 1909. It just imagine $60,000. That's how much they paid. They're just like, "Here Liz, can we have it?" And she's like, "Yeah." Sure. She, they took it over. Thanks, Liz. And uh, yeah, thank you, Liz. <laughs> it was completed <laughs> in 1913, but yeah. Liverpool Liz. Well, and and maybe a lot of people know this, but it was actually our first like rose garden. So before the big one in Washington Park, it was mm-hmm. at Peninsula Park. It's still a rose garden. It's a slightly different one than the the Washington Park one, but it's actually older. Oh, you're you're totally right. It, it was the city's first public rose garden and first community center. So lots of firsts. Thank you, Liverpool Liz. Yeah, <laughs> right lots now. of firsts there. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, what's the most dog-friendly park? Oh, okay. The best dog park now is Normandale Park in Hollywood. It's super cool. There are three fully fenced-in areas. They are accessible by each other. So if you go into one and your dog isn't really feeling the dogs in that group, you can just kind of pop over. Someone brought kiddie pools to the park and fills them up because there's water sources there, which is crucial because not every dog park has running water, but Mm -hmm. this one does. Um, completely covered by trees. So even when it's like a hundred degrees out, it's like 85 in the park mulched. Like the city takes really good care of this place and it's just a really fun, chill, chill spot. Oh, nice. What about you, Julie? Julia, who has no dogs? What about you, Julia? Julia? What's your favorite dog park? (laughs) Brian, your, your answer was so thoughtful, like from the perspective of the dog. Mine is just like, this is where you go to see dogs run around and have a good time (laughs) if you don't own one. Um, for me, it's it's Laurelhurst Park. Uh, during the summertime, it's it's a little bit different because they close the off-leash area to events. 
and they move mm-hmm. it to another section. But um, at other times of the year or moments where there aren't events going on, there's this like huge hill with this tiny little like bench so you can view all the dogs like running around and interacting with Very each other. Fun. And it's just the cutest thing. There's this um, person that I see almost every time I'm there and they're, they're in a motorized wheelchair and they have this like old little like chihuahua looking dog that walks next to them Mm -hmm. and they always wave every single time that you pass by them. Mm -hmm. And it just like seems like such a friendly welcoming space for dogs like that, like kind of all of all kinds. So that's why it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Well, the park that I think is the most dog friendly is something that I share with a listener. So I'm going to just let him tell you what we think is the most dog friendly park. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. My name is Chris Olson. I'm a candidate for Portland City Council District 2. Uh, but my favorite uh, park is Chimney Park, the large dog park in St. John's. Uh, I just take my park, my dog there every weekend. Uh, his name's Cheese it and we like run around and he loves it. And so we're there pretty much every Saturday morning or Sunday morning. And yeah, it's just our favorite because it makes our dog so happy to have that space to run around. So yeah, that's our favorite, my favorite park in the city for sure. Cheese it. <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> it's a great name. So let me tell you just a really fun fact about Chimney Park. So it's adjacent to Pier Park. And yeah. Pier Park is like uh, essentially where people go to Frisbee golf. And it's like one of the largest Frisbee golf uh, areas, in, I think, in the United States. But mm-hmm. it's called Chimney Park because it was once the site of the city's incinerator. What? <laughs> it has since been removed. So there are no chimneys now. No, no, but, but that's why it was called Chimney Park because I've always been like, that's kind of hardcore. Where's the chimney? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's so funny is that my dog hates other dogs, not in an aggressive <laughs> way, but she just doesn't get them. Like she's like, what yeah. am I supposed to do with you? You don't have treats. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's practical. Yeah, so that's why I like that park because it's so big that she can do her little thing. Like she's like, you know, when kids go in recess, there's always the one that just like goes off by themselves and looks for four leaf clovers. Like that's yeah. my dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute. So yeah, she doesn't dog very well, but I love it. And I think that that park, it's closed in. So if you have dogs that like to Some chase. Some dogs have terrible recall too. Yeah. Mine, mine basically goes death when, uh, <laughs> when she wants to. So. Yeah. Yeah. It does suck when it rains because it is a little muddy. Um, Mm, But other than that, pretty sweet park. And Pier Park is also just a wonderful park to walk through, even if you don't want to play Frisbee golf. Well, and Claudia, I would actually counter, does it suck when it's muddy? Because golden retrievers love to roll in the mud. (laughs) That's probably the best park in the world when it's muddy. It's Uh, so funny because like me and my little like Cavalier King Charles would say yes. (laughs) It sucks. <laughs> it sucks. And then here's this like big, goofy, four legged weirdo who's just like, yeah, mud pit, fun. <laughs> well, this is it. We're going to pick our all around best park in Portland. Uh, I don't know if we're going to decide with, you know, what we've just discussed or if someone's going to come out with something totally left field. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're just like, actually, I, I saved this one up. But uh, Brian, you want to go first? What's the all around best park? And we're talking, so that means that's the best park for picnic. It's it's yeah. dog friendly. It's somewhere to show off when your friends or family uh, come around. Yeah, for me, it's it's Mount Tabor Park. Um, mm-hmm. It's big, so there's literally room for even if there's like you know Wednesday nights, people turn it into a giant dance party. There's still parts of the park you can go where if you're like I hate dancing, you can go do something else in the park. Yeah, uh, tennis courts, hiking trails. Water that you can stare at on a super hot day and be like, wouldn't it be cool if we could swim in it? Uh, It's just, it's a park for everyone. I really think it's our crown jewel. Oh, man. What about you, Julia? Uh, I, for all the reasons you just described, Brian, I feel the same way about Laurelhurst Park. And instead of tennis courts, it's pickleball courts. But everything else is is about similar, where it's big enough where you can escape if there's a dance party going on at the center places for your dogs. There's a little lake you can't go in that looks turquoise for some reason. Um, But it is just, it's a really special place. Julie, do not go in that lake. (laughs) Please don't. I think about it every Don't do it. Do not do it. Not a good call. Yeah. Unless you want to become like a DC B-list superhero called Swamp Thing. (laughs) Like, then you go into it. But otherwise, stay out. So yes, sad. it's got to be worse than the algae blooms, that oh thing. There's no way. Julia went into the lake and now her superpower is cancer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. 
that's an odd one, but it's it's real. Woohoo! All right. Um, <laughs> uh, before I give you mine, I want to play a listener's all around best park pick. I don't want to say what it is. Can you set it up, Julia? I got it. Uh, my name is Renata, and I live in Roseway neighborhood. Um, I would say uh, Cully Park. Um, because it is a, it has a pretty new playground. It has open space, uh, beautiful views. You could see airplanes taking off. And then I like that it's in an, in an area where a lot you know there's a lot of people living in that area, but there's not a lot of green spaces. So I like that they built that space into a park. Have you guys been to Cully Park? I've been to Cully pl- plenty of times. I've mm-hmm. never been to the park. Yeah, ever. I've not gone, but I've been to Broughton Beach, which is right next to there. It's right off the Columbia. And I know what that listener is saying about the airplanes flying over. It's it's wild. Like, it feels like it's like 10 feet above your head. Because it is, basically. <laughs> the airport's right there. <laughs> well, the reason I love her answer so much is because Cully Park was, you know, this amazing green space that needed to happen. You know, Cully mm-hmm. is just known for being one of the only neighborhoods that has like the least amount of green spaces. I guess the Olmstead brothers just did not look in that direction. Um, but I don't know if it was part of Portland at that point. But prior to Portland buying that, Cully Park was actually a landfill. Yeah, oh. yeah. I heard about that wow. too. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was privately owned landfill. And uh, the landfill permanently closed in 1990. The city took it over in 2002, and it partnered with Verde and a nonprofit called Let's Build uh, Coley Park. And so it was transformed into the park that is now in 2018. And so there's just something about that spirit of that park where I'm just like, that is the coolest fucking park. That is. Well, yeah, it's just like everything we like about Portland. The fact that like we can get stuff done, the fact that we can turn a really ugly thing into something beautiful. I didn't know it was that new either. What a cool way to uh, yeah. just repurpose a, a blight into something that everyone can use. Exactly. Yeah. Especially to an underserved community. So I was just like, yeah, Cully Park all the way. <laughs> um, but if Cully Park were around, I would say Cathedral Park was up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's my favorite all around. I think it's even like dog friendly. It is. There's a dog area. It's not leashed. It is by a train track. <laughs> <laughs> But it goes real slow. The train goes real slow. <laughs> Enough time to grab your dog. It's an adrenaline dog park. <laughs> no, but I take my dog because, she, again, she's not really into other dogs. She's into running super fast in brush because she was just trained to give me gain to shoot, even though I don't do that, but it's in her blood. So she loves running into brush, and there's just enough brush uh, by the river that yeah. I just let her run through and she, you know, she'll come out. Sometimes it's not smelling wonderful, but like. <laughs> <laughs> Slimy. Yeah, but it's um, great. She has a wonderful time. Yeah, Cathedral Park is just like a really cool place that just has a bunch of different things. That's what's cool about all these parks that we mentioned. They're all like known for more than one thing. It's not just like a great place to picnic. It's, you know, a mm-hmm. great place to let your dog be a weirdo or to see people hula hoop with flames or something. Like yeah. They're all yeah. they're all fun spots. Yeah. I just feel like there isn't really, I mean. There is no best park. It's too like. They're all best parks. It's like trying to pick yeah. your, your favorite child. Like, sure, maybe you <sighs> have funny. one that you like think Always is funny or one. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a middle child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever there's a middle child, like, in a conversation, especially an argument, you're just like, that, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Lots of experience. <laughs> We just need one of you here. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, well, thank you so much, you guys, for hanging out with me and talking through some of the best parks in Portland. And like Brian said, there isn't there isn't a bad park. There isn't a stinker in the bunch. So, yeah, please go out and enjoy one of the either 221 to over 300 parks that Portland has. <laughs> Do us a favor and count while you're there. Will you yeah. somebody let us know? Yeah, get back to us. That's all for today here on CityCast Portland. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend, rate or leave us a review. It really does help us out. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's.